In this video, I'm going to show you how to use many types of fruits and vegetables to create the most fabulous monoprint collage papers. And make sure you stay to the end to see the result of my joy-filled experimenting. Hello, my name is Katherine Raines. I'm a mixed media collage artist and welcome to Tune In Tuesday, where I share weekly art demos to expand your mixed media toolbox. If you see value in my art demos, I would deeply appreciate a thumbs up and if you would subscribe to my channel below. Links for all the supplies to make these papers are down below under the word more. And you might also want to check out my free five day online workshop, Collage Kickstart, where I teach you how to use all the collage papers taught during Tune In Tuesday to make fabulous collages the very first try. So let's get into creating collage papers with fruits and vegetables. This may look like a bunch of fruit and vegetables to you, but to me, it looks like a wild paper making experiment waiting to happen. I have been dreaming of doing this particular art demo ever since I saw an artist on Instagram cut open a pear and make mono prints out of it. So what I did is I went to the grocery store and I collected as many fruits and vegetables as I could that I thought might have an interesting shape to it, very similar to mono printing with leaves, which I've already done. I wanted to mono print with different shapes that the fruit and vegetables might give us. So come along as I try each one of these and let's see what kind of magical collage papers we can create from the grocery store. Before we start cutting up our vegetables, let's talk about the supplies, which of course are the fruits and vegetables, but also different kinds of papers. And I experimented with many different types and they all worked great. I used a mixed media, 108 pounds. I used a drawing paper, which was 80 pounds. My favorite paper, which is rice paper. I also just used plain old copy paper. This is 28 pound, but I'm sure 22 pound, which is your normal copy paper would also work. You also want a brayer. And for this demo, I'm also gonna use my standard two primaries that I'm making most of my papers out of, which is Thalo Blue Green Shade, Hansi Yellow Light, plus a little black and white and some iridescent gold fluid acrylics. And that is it. This is a very simple supply list and everything will be linked under the description of this video. Yeah. Let's start this wild mono printing experiment with an orange. So I've got a knife, I'm just gonna cut this lengthwise and we'll see what we get. I'm gonna lay some paint out and let's just start with a little blue. Okay. So I'm gonna mix this paint right on the palette. I'm using a, a brayer to do this. And I'm gonna bravely put the paint on here and see what we get. I'm gonna try this with all different kinds of papers. And this, I believe is a mixed media paper. So let's see what happens. Hmm. I'm noticing this smells really nice. <laughs> you know, as any paper, you gotta practice a little bit before you get something that you like. What's interesting is the orange juice is actually mixing with my paint. So that's it's making it a little more watery than I expected. Interesting, one side doesn't want to go down. Kind of like that print. Next up is a fennel. Again, I have no idea. I'm trying to cut straight up and down so I get a really good flat surface. Oh, well, this might be something, it might not. Now, this is definitely not good because it's all different, it's cut up, unless I just use that little, which I could. And that might be interesting too. Some copy paper. And I am going to try, you don't know what's gonna happen until you do it. The best part of this is this smells really good. The fennel smells amazing. I think it might be kind of interesting maybe to put some gold just on the edges of this fennel and kind of make some accents. Okay, 
okay, that's not bad. It's interesting. Give it some time. I might actually love this one. Interesting. Okay, a nice piece of drawing paper. I'm gonna put this beautiful green on it. Okay, I'm gonna try the other side of this pair. It looks a little flatter, and the flatter it is, the better impression I'm gonna get. second color on top is much more to my liking. It adds some more interest. Okay, now we got something. Now this is on rice paper, so I'm not showing much on the back, but I have a really good, interesting print. I like that on the front. Let's try an endive. Some interesting shapes there. Let's see what this does. Piece of drawing paper. Got some interesting variegated kind of blue teal green there. Oh, I, my hands are all dirty, so they're getting on the paper. I'm hopeful here. Ooh, that's beautiful. Very nice. Most unusual one. I didn't think this was gonna work, and it's actually working great. Okay, I love this one. This is beautiful. Okay, I wanna try an apple. Question is, this way or this way? I think I'm gonna do it this way. Piece of drawing paper here. Now, I'm gonna try blotting a little bit of that paint off onto a scratch piece of paper. Let's see if I get a better print that way. Press hard. Oh, nice. Yeah, I like it with less paint on it. Very nice. I may have found the trick here. Okay, blot off a tiny bit. That turned out pretty cool. So I wanna try something, even though I like this, I'm gonna try printing with this pepper and see if I might be able to get some kind of smaller dashes in the middle. Okay, that's got a really interesting little top there. So I'm gonna put a little bit darker paint here. because I want a little bit of a contrast. Oh, this is gonna, I think this is gonna be cool. Like put it in the middle of things. Might even be better with a darker, much darker blue. I think I'm gonna take this one and do a whole page of these with the with them interlocking each other like actually touching i think this is i really like this as a stamp key i'm finding out here as i go is pressing pretty hard but you also have to have a very flat surface in order to press so that all edges of that pepper actually meet the paper and i kind of like it just as much kind of fainted like a little bit of faint paint as the darker paint when it's really globby. That is very interesting. In fact, I like it a lot. I am dying to try this orange again. The problem is I, I haven't cut this orange really well. If you can see, there's like a curve in it as I wear I cut it. So let me see, this is a little flatter. So I am gonna use what I already have here. See if I can do a better job than the one I did before. Press in really hard. Really good impression here. Well, I'm not sure if I got a better one. It's kind of hard to tell until you have it all down. Yeah, I like that. What I'm learning is I like it with the paint not so heavy. If I don't load up on paint every time, I kind of, well, that's too light. Let's get a little more on there. Yeah, 
This is actually quite cool. I like it. Got a lemon in half. This is a piece of mixed media paper. Oh, this could be interesting. Now what's interesting about this one is that I am getting a little bit of that lemon juice in with the paint. So I get a little bit of variation here, which I think is actually kind of interesting. So I'm gonna add a little more there. There you go. It's like squeezing a lemon with the paint, but I'm liking the look of that a lot. That's not a paint. Lemon, I like. I'm gonna try one more with lemon. Just barely dousing the lemon in the paint, I like even more. Yeah, this one's a winner. That. Super cool. So this is rice paper. Kind of liking, oh my goodness, I love this. I like it. A little bit of irrigation in the color. Yeah, 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 yeah. They get better as they go. Love, 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 love. I'm gonna try doing some layering here. So I love blue and gold together. If I douse this lemon, a little bit of gold, just lightly, oh yeah, okay. I think this is gonna be great when it's dry. I can't resist doing more of this orange, but now I found out that I really like just dipping everything in here. Let's see how this works. So what I've discovered is I really like it when it isn't so gloppy like that. So I'm gonna, there you go, take some of it off. Yeah, I like that a lot. So, you know, the joy of making collage papers is that I'm not gonna use probably that half of the collage paper, but I love this part. So, you know, with collage, I'm just tearing off the parts that I really like. So to me, this is a win because I like it, half of it, or at least three-fourths of it. Okay, what's a corn gonna do? This is a piece of copy paper. This is my slough off page. So let's see what this is gonna do. I am gonna use this almost like a roller, like my rolling pin. You notice that I'm not using gloves. I always use, or most of the time use nitrile gloves but I was working so fast that my hands were getting all in the paint, which means it was getting in the prints. So that wasn't gonna work for me. Okay, let's see how this works. Now, this is definitely not flat. Huh. Well, you know, oddly enough, I actually like this. It'd be really even cooler if I had some different colors layered on top all over my hands, which I absolutely hate, but it's all for the sake of experimentation. This is kind of cool. You know, this doesn't look like anything on the surface maybe, but you know, you need papers for collage that aren't all kind of patterned, you know? This has kind of a really subtle pattern. And actually the more the paint goes off, of the corn onto the paper, the more I like it. So I think that is actually a win just because I've got a, a quieter paper. I'm gonna try this one more time with the paint that's left over on here. I'm not gonna load it up anymore because now I'm gonna get a different kind of print. It's kind of like it's hollow, you know, where there's not a lot of paint, it's printing differently. And I like that look. This will be very, very cool when I use it in a collage. You know, so I create five different types of collage papers onto five different videos in five weeks, and then I will pull them together into one collage. This simple paper right here is very, very usable. I like that, even though it's so simple. Corn on the cob, a win. And I like it so much, I am gonna add some gold to this. So now I got some gold and some blue. Let's see what happens. I'm also at the point where I want to use up as much of this paint on my palette as I possibly can. Let's try it again. Oh yeah. Wow. Let's 
turn this around. I love that blue because the blue and the gold are activating. So it's kind of a different kind of teal. Yes, yes, yes. Who knew corn on the cob would make a fabulous mono print? Wow. Fab. This is going to be dangerous. So this is, this is an onion. I don't know if I'm going to like this because I'm not really an onion person. I don't like eating them. I don't like the smell of them. They make me cry. Um, this could be a disaster, but let's see. This was actually my husband's idea. He loves onions and he said, oh, try an onion. Well, we're going to try it. I'm trying to get flat cut. Okay. This could be a winner. It's got some interesting texture to it. Uh, I need to throw this away quick. Piece of copy paper. Let's see if I can get some of that liquid off the onion. And again, I'm going to try to use up this paint I already have. Could be interesting, actually. Get a little slough off first. And see what it, what it does. Push it down pretty hard. This could be interesting. It's really got to be pushed down hard to get all the rings, though. Oh, this is possibility. And so far, it's not bugging me terms of that onion smell. Wow. Okay. So let's try just doing this method. Oh, I've moved it a little bit. Hmm, I don't like that. But you know, this kind of thing I could actually cut out. I may not use that per se, but I could use the ones I like by cutting them out. I got those great in the beginning. I can't get the ring. So this requires me to push it down pretty hard all the way around in the middle. And it's not bad, surprisingly. So I'm looking at all the leftover vegetables I have and the endive was actually one of my favorites and I wanna use uh, the paint on my palette here. So do a little sloughing off here. I'm actually doing this on rice paper now. Yeah, the endive is a real winner. And I like this because I, I got a lot of variation of color now on my palette. I've also got a lot of variation on my hands as well. Luckily, I'm giving myself a manicure tonight <laughs> because this one's ruined. Yeah, love. So, endive. Win, love that. And because I love it so much, I'm gonna dip this in a little gold. I just can't help myself. Dip it in some gold and make some more. Oh yeah, this could be my favorite sheet of them all. That blue combined with the gold makes the most divine aqua. Absolutely scrumptious. So now my mission is to use up all of the paint I have. That's yummy. Love it. Now, of course, I'm thinking, okay, what would happen if I put a little bit of gold on that? Just a little. Incredibly cool. So I look over all of the pieces I have and I go, okay, which ones do I only marginally like? And I like this one, but it's not my favorite. So maybe I could add a little bit of gold like I did on the other ones, just to add a little bit of pop to it. It's a quick little, to add a little bit of interest to it. Might have been too much interest. And I do like that one better. And, and this is my tools of the trade. Now, some of these work better than others, like my acorn squash, fail. Onion good, orange good. Love, love, love endive. Cucumber was okay. Pear was okay. Love the lemon and absolutely love the corn. And the apple, you know, so it just takes a lot of experimenting. And when all my papers are dry, I will show you the end result. As is always the case when I make collage papers, I end up with those I love and those that are just okay. This is my just okays. But luckily, usually my love pile is much, much bigger than my not love pile. I got about seven or eight in here, and these aren't horrible, but they are ripe for a second layer. You know, so I will put them in a pile of potentials for later. 
So let me show you the ones that I'm pretty crazy about. I think this was the endive. I love anything with endive. Love, I think this is a lemon. Love that. More endive, but with gold. That's a lemon with gold on it. I think that's a pepper. Corn. Who knew I would love corn so much? The pear, particularly when there's two layers. That is a pepper. More endive. Combination of a couple of them. Pear. That's an apple with a couple layers on it. This one I'm just completely crazy about. Orange, orange, and onion. Who knew? So I hope that you have fun experimenting on your own. Go through your own produce um, or the grocery store or both and find different shapes that you think might lend itself to this. And I would appreciate if you would share what you find because, you know, we all are experimenting and learning from each other as we dive into fruits and vegetables, right? So now that my hands are clean, of course, I want to go into making a bunch of more of these because they were so much fun to do. And I hope that you have as much fun as I did in creating your fruits and vegetable monoprints. To learn how to make many more types of collage papers, check out the links that are about to appear right here. And be sure to join my free five-day online class, Collage Kickstart. The link is under the word more below. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I would be deeply grateful if you would. And I'll see you back here next week for Tune In Tuesday for another art demo.